also have that great to our family, to our community, and to our country in general. I thank you all for being a part of this. I wish all of us a good outing. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ma, for that. Thank you. We really appreciate Okay, so we'll move into the next item on our agenda. And um, I, I just remember that when I started speaking, I did not tell you who I am. So I'm so sorry about that. My name is Owan Kwakuta, and I am the Programs Officer for Start Foundation. And I'm not on the call alone. I have my other team members on the call with me. Olivia is here, Wisdom is here, Frank is here, and of course, the Innocent is here with us too. And of course, our ED. So um, thank you so much for, for that. At this point, we'll get into knowing more about that foundation, what we do, who we are. And to take up on this um, session, on, on this session will be Mr. Wisdom, okay, the MRE officer for the foundation. Over to you, Wisdom. All right. Good all right. morning once again. I believe we can all see my slides. I believe we can all see my slides. All right. Briefly, I would just want to um, happy International Women's Day to every woman who is online with us this morning. I just want to quickly run you through to who we are as an organization, TAD Foundation, also known as Tosina Bimbola Dukwesi Foundation. Uh, at inception, of that foundation, the founders sought to ensure that vulnerable women, children, and youth are given a great priority in Nigeria and across the continent of Africa. It's an NGO with keen interests in global issues of development, especially Africa-related issues with a special focus on women, children, and then youth empowerment, technology, and digital economy. The foundation have done a whole lot, have mobilized and see how women and children can be, um, uh, poverty can be eradicated amidst women and then youth also by empowering them in diverse ways, including education and giving them relevant skills. One of our core mission as an organization is to be a leading initiative formed with the purpose of eradicating poverty, empowering women and children of Africa origin through education, relevant skills, as well as creating awareness on better practices to help the climate uh, reduce poverty. What is our passion? Our passion are basically eight areas where we looked at uh, which are more of our thematic areas, are skill acquisition and better livelihood, education and scholarship, where we have um, several students who are on scholarship under the foundation. We also have um, health education for women and the girl child. Like we had had several um, events that has to do with educating the girl child on her health status, like distributing menstrual part to different secondary schools within FCT. Then we also looked at our nutrition. We know a good diet makes a good living. We are also into youth empowerment, entrepreneurship, and employability. We believe that every youth can be self-employed and empowered when given the right knowledge. We also are passionate about OVC, often and variable child care, where we give them support. Then we also do leadership and good governance. We advocate for youth who will take up responsibility and policies to be implemented to favor the woman and the girl and the youth. And then lastly, but not the least, we are into digital economy and technology. So far, since inception of TAD, we've been able to accomplish certain few, but not uh, all. But because of time, I'll just go through some of the projects we have done. Um, we've been able to reach about 100 women during the last year International Women's Day event virtually. Then we also were able to reach 400 girls with Project Padha. It was a project we did at a secondary school where sanitary pads were distributed to these girls in public schools. And then we also had a program, 
a one day workshop which was impactful for some of us who came online. We just saw a glimpse of it. A one day workshop on signs of sexual harassment. And we had over 130 secondary school girls from six different schools in FCT informed and giving adequate information on how to deal with issues like this and appropriate channel to report to. And not all, we also were able to reach 750 secondary school girls from uh, um, within Gagwalada Aziz. So we left our comfort zones, not just in our comfort zone. It was a project that we call Project One Girl, One Part Campaign. And then we also had one which we did uh, empowering the indigent women on how to make reusable sanitary pad. And we had about 30 women who were trained with these skills. You can just see a picture slide of it. And then all these were able to be accomplished with our management team. And then we have our team, which we have um, who are Kung Fu Ansa, who serves as the program officer, who just spoke to you just a few minutes ago. And then we also have Franklin Ambo, our communication officer. And then we also have Olivia Peace as our front desk officer. And we also have myself as the MIE officer. And all these few projects we have been able to accomplish within a short while we are accomplished by the help of some of our partners, which include AIT, Dark Communication, Sika, Digivation, Cyber Africa 10, Ray Power, Part of Africa. And these are a list and a few of some of our partners. And we know with more partners, we can do more and reach out to many more women and girl child out there. Thank you for listening. And you can follow us on any of our social media handles. Thank you so much, um, Wisdom. Thank you for that beautiful uh, presentation about that foundation. And um, thank you for letting us know what that foundation stands for and what we do here. Um, at this point, we are getting into the session proper. We are getting into the session proper. We don't please make the slide of this available. We are getting into the session proper. So this is time that we have to learn. This is time that we have to pick up our pens, pick up our writing pad. It's time for learning. It's time for learning. At this point in time, we are going to introduce our speaker. Wisdom, please, can you project the slide of the profile? Okay, so we'll just go ahead and read. Nancy Naji is a highly accomplished media professional, a editor and philanthropist, celebrated for her contributions to Nigerian journalism and economic development. As the host and executive producer of Morning Line with Nancy, Nigerian's top business TV program, she brings insightful perspectives to audience daily on African Independent Television, AIT. Nancy is also the founder of the African Economic Congress, hosting interdisciplinary knowledge and solutions, and the convener of the Practical and Business Acceleration Mark Atlas, CABN, addressing real business challenges and facilitating connections between entrepreneurs and government institutions. Recognized as one of the Nigerians' most influential women in journalism, Nancy mentored the next generation of reporters and has hosted over 5,000 TV shows featuring high-profile guests and global leaders. She engages in high-stakes debates and moderate events, including World Bank and IMF meetings, underscoring her commitment to economic development and bridging academic for academia, policy, and the public. In leadership roles and membership, including chair of the African Center for Entrepreneurship and Information Development, Nancy demonstrates a dedication to professionalism, ethics, and the advancement of media and entrepreneurship in Nigeria. Ladies and gentlemen, with plenty love emoji in the chat box, um, clapping emoji in the chat box. In the chat box, please let's let welcome Mrs. Nancy Naji. Nice to meet you, Ma, and thank you for joining us today. Over to you, Ma. Thank 
Thank you very, very much. Thank you very, very much. Good morning, everyone. Can you all hear me? Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. And um, happy International Women's Day to all the women on this platform. And uh, I would also say thank you to all the he for she's that are on this platform too, because we know that we all need each other for a better world. So good morning and thank you. It's um, a very, you know, it's exciting and a pleasure for me to be here. I want to, uh, first of all, uh, say thank you to uh, Dr. Mrs. Tosin Abimbola Dokbesi, uh, the founder of Tide Foundation. Thank you very much, ma'am, uh, for the minute fit for me uh, to come on this platform uh, to speak on such a day like this. And thank you for the work you are doing. Um, you know, they say there's a proverb that says, you know, from tiny drops of water make a mighty ocean because you may actually never know how many people you impact. I've uh, seen, I saw the presentation earlier by Wisdom, and I pray by God's grace that you will continue to grow with this foundation in Jesus' name. So, um, Let's quickly get into it. It's such an exciting time to be a woman. Yeah. And why do I say this? Because we know that these days, um, because of the economic challenge, we've seen that women are now taking so many responsibilities. In fact, we've seen that in many homes, women have become even the breadwinners uh, because of perhaps the impacting of their spouses, tough economic conditions, perhaps their spouses have lost their jobs and all of that, you know, even single ladies that are not married, you know, a whole lot now depends on us uh, concerning uh, our money. And that is why it is very instructive that such a day like this is celebrated as the United Nations calls on the world to commemorate a woman's day, a day set aside for, for women. Today, I think the UN is calling on the world today uh, for us to invest in women to accelerate progress. And how do we do this? We can't invest in women, we can't accelerate progress except we create, intentionally create economic opportunities that equip women with uh, resources and opportunities that promote our uh, personal and economic Yes. The slide you're seeing now, of course, the thing for today's International Women's Day is budget women accelerate progress. But the core campaign theme for today is inspire inclusion, as you can as see, that will definitely promote personal and economic growth for us as women, that will make us feel and that will make us empowered. And if we can get all of this together, it will impact overall economy. Now in Nigeria, for example, in Nigeria, the population of men and women are almost the same. We're almost 50-50%. And this now means that providing women with training Financial support, creating platforms such as this that the Tap Foundation has created is really very integral to enrich women with, with you know, nuggets and resources that will make us uh, better. Of course, the theme, as you can see there, inspire inclusion, is more apt now more than ever. Because as women, we need power. We have power, even as women. Some of us may not even realize that we have power. We have that subtle power that has multiplier effect. So you can imagine if we now add financial power to it, it becomes a major component for building inclusive society. One in every ten women, one in every ten women in the in the world lives in extreme poverty. When I mean extreme, not poverty, because poverty has grades. This one is about extreme poverty. And that is why it is essential that for you listening to me on this platform, that we are able to pull ourselves out of the uh, economic challenges that we face uh, right now. Um, when I saw this data some time ago, 
and the data is at a prime working age. For those of us in, in our working ages, only 61% of women are in the labor force versus 90% of men. What does that mean? If a woman does not have a job, how do you begin to be financially independent? So that brings me now, let's go to the second slide. Let's go, we can go ahead. Let me see the second, uh, the other slide. Now that brings me to why financial literacy is very important. The first question is, what is actually financial literacy? And I want to make this presentation as basic as possible so that we can understand, because sometimes we could be mixed in all this big, big English and we are so lost in it. What is financial literacy? Simply put, it means knowing how to handle your money wisely. Knowing how to handle your money wisely. The ability to make wise decisions with your money. And if you're able to make wise decisions with your money, what does it afford you? It gives you greater monetary stability. You are able to be stable monetarily that whenever any challenge comes, you are not running helter skelter. You have clarity that, okay, if there's this challenge, I think I have money to solve it. So if you're able to handle your money wisely, it gives you monetary stability. It gives you less stress. It give, makes us that our BP will not go high. Because for women, for sometimes if you don't have money, you start running helter skelter. You start seeing women, they are, start, they are bringing out their wrappers, they're bringing out their jewelry, they are selling and all of that. So it gives us less stress. Then it gives us in turn, if you're able to have less stress because you don't have financial wahala, as it were, it gives you a higher quality of life. You'll be able to live better. You'll be able to even live longer because now you have money to take care of yourself physically wise, to take care of yourself health wise. You are able to know, okay, I need to go to be doing my checkup every three months or twice a year. Money affords you to do that. It improves your financial well being. Now, let's go to the next slide. Let's go to the next slide. Now, let's take a look at why um, financial literacy is important. Like I mentioned earlier, financial literacy gives us a definitely economic independence, yes. It gives you economic independence. It makes you manage your finances very well. I, 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 I uh, defined earlier why, what financial literacy is. So don't just be, um, don't just be overtaken by the English you are seeing here. It encompasses the knowledge and skills required to make informed financial decisions, manage money effectively, and plan for your future. That I have I mentioned earlier, which is handling your money wisely. Now, why is financial literacy important for women? It is important for us because it makes us take control. If you're in control of your finances, it gives you this kind of edge. It makes you think that whatever that comes your way, you are able to withstand it. If you're a married woman, if you're in a family, let's say if, if your husband has lost his job or things are not going well, or even your husband's pay is not um, adequate and you are financially fit, as a woman, you are able to contribute. But if you are not financially fit, because it's not only physical well-being that you must have even as a woman, even today, we should know that, okay, we should take care of our health, we should take care of our children, we should take care of whatever it is. But your financial fitness is very essential. And your financial fitness also cascades into other areas. So it empowers us to take control of our financial lives. It makes us also overcome economic barriers. Like I mentioned, we all know we are living right now in Nigeria where the cost of living is so high. Um, we're a crate of egg today. As I, was it today or two days ago, I was selling for 4500 This is a crate of egg that I bought uh, two weeks ago for 3007 So I was asking myself, was it yesterday? I said, so if I take 10000 naira to the market, I'll be able to get only two crates, of, two crates of eggs. Meanwhile, two years ago, just a year and a half ago, it could buy me many, many crates when egg was selling, a crate of egg was selling for uh, 1000 naira. So that is why it is essential more than ever is a woman to be financially literate. Now, let me put this here. For the fact that we are literate does not mean that we are financially literate because I've also seen that many of us, even including men, 
I've seen men that are professors, but when it comes to handling money, they are, they are poor at it. So it's not just only women, but it, it is essential that as women, we are able to take our financial destiny into our hands. So what does it take for you to be a financial literate? You must possess the skills. Can I see the other, the other slide, please? The next slide. You must possess the skills. And what are those skills? You must possess the, the principles. Financial, does it start from? It starts from number one. Okay, I've mentioned this, this slide you are seeing on the screen, challenges faced by women. I've talked about it, economic disparities and all of that, uh, limited access to financial services, cultural and societal norms, I mentioned all of that. But let me now speak about principles of financial literacy. And number one, number one is earnings. Your income is the foundation of your personal finance. What is it that you earn as a woman? How much money do you get as a woman? That is the basis for your personal finances. That is the basis of all of this that I will speak today. So if you are not earning as a woman and you're on this platform, try as much as possible to get earning power. Try as much as possible to start something, to get a job, to do a business so that you will make money. Because without making money, you cannot be financially empowered. You cannot be financially independent. So your income is the foundation of your personal finance. It is the basis for your lifestyle and your financial future. So how do you now ex implement the principle of earnings? You need to live within your means. Many of us women are normally boxed into that space whereby we do not live within our means. Some of us are also um, you know, impacted by what is happening within our environment, impacted by our friends, what would people say? I always say something, don't live like the Joneses. Don't, don't spend the money you don't have to please people you don't like. So learn to live within your means. Pay for your lifestyle without debt, excessive debt. Manage your income. You've got to manage your income. You need to also find ways to put aside portions of your income for your future. I will come back to that in a bit to uh, tell us, uh, to give us you know, a fundamental way where we can do this in case you've not started doing that. You need to also set up as women, we should know that we will not remain young forever. As you grow older, your children are also growing older. We need to plan for our future now that we should not even depend on our children for future benefit. Because as women, we're also boxed into that space where we say, eh, my children will take care of me in the future. Have you sat down to think? These economic challenges that we're having right now, you would even throw your child in school. At the end of the day, the child does not have a job. The child whom you are trained in the university is back to your house. You are the one feeding your child. You are the one doing everything for the child. This is the more reason why you need to be financially independent. Do everything within your power, within the space that you are. Agile, healthy, to create financial independence for yourself. And when you are able to get that steady income, open up more sources of income, you are now able to set up an automatic retirement plan for you that you are now able to take care of your future. Now, the second principle is savings, savings and investment. Creating a budget, a budget is very essential. It will help you put aside your money for savings and investment. This allows you to grow your wealth and can empower you to make major financial plans such as you can buy a house. Who says you can buy a house as a woman? Even if you're married, you can buy it. Even if you are a young lady, there are different um, investment outlets now. We'll come back to that later. Different investment outlets now invest your money and you make uh, uh, your dividends from it. How do you also implement the principle of budgeting? Of course, you. I hope you're listening that I said budgeting on that you have invest savings and investment. For that, you've got to monitor where your money is going to each month. You've got to cut optional expenses, especially now that we're living in a cost of living crisis. Cut optional expenses for the things you can live without and put those monies into savings. 
or investment into an investment fund, for example. You can also create separate categories for specific goals. You can say, I want to buy a car, for example, or I want to go on holiday at the end of every year. I want to send my children to school, so, so school and all of that. You are able to do it. You create several buckets and you are able to put monies into uh, those uh, buckets. Now let's move to the next principle. Borrowing in this. Some people say, Oh, I don't like borrowing. No, I don't want to be a borrower. Uh, the Bible empowers me. I must give. Fantastic. You must give. Okay, for those handling the slide, just keep it here. Just keep it here a bit. We should also know our male counterparts, they take risk a lot. Have we asked ourselves why? Part of the risk they also take is borrowing, but I will need to say it here that you need to borrow. Sometimes, let me create this, let me give you this analogy. For example, you're a woman on this platform and you, and you, you have the desire to do a house. Also, they are, we have real estate banks. As it were. We have mortgage banks, for example. How many of us on this platform have gone into a mortgage bank, for example, and said, ah, my desire is to own a home and I want to pay in the next 10 years. I want to pay. Do you know you can do that? I'm going to a mortgage bank for wherever you're joining us from. And they are able to structure it for you. What that mortgage bank does for you is that that is borrowing you money as it were. Then you are paying of 10 years or 15 to own that home. So that is also a... a a, a, a borrowing style. You cannot actually also enlarge my business. How do I, do I go into a microfinance bank, for example, I need five million to enlarge. Are you able to speak with them and they are able to borrow you that money, but you have a, a, a borrowing plan and you have a repayment plan. So borrowing wisely could allow you to make major purchases in other crimes like in the US. Borrowing is very essential because it makes you build your credit. The higher your credit, the better your credit is, you are other, other things that money can afford you. So borrowing can actually make you uh, pay for a home, for example, even a car, even a college ed education, for example. So, but you need to carefully weigh to be able to determine that you can afford, you need to have interest rates, for example, and you need to pay your bills on time. Now, that brings me to the next principle, which is spending. Because many of us are boxed in that situation that once you get money, the towards your wants. What do I want? For you as a person, you know what you want. You put it towards your want. Then the remaining 20% is towards your savings and investment. But if you take a look at yourself, what is your earning potential? How much do you earn? What is your risk? You can say, okay, I can do with 50% for my needs. I can actually do 30% for my savings and, and investment. Because I, I don't really can do like Take a look at what happened in 2020. We shut down. This has not happened in over 100 years. And we shut down for weeks. We shut down. Some people thought, okay, we could shut down for two days, three days, four days, one week. One week went into two weeks. Two weeks went into three weeks. And people say, so what that should also show us and what that should teach us is that we should create an emergency fund. We should build an emergency fund in case... control. And what are those unforeseen circumstances? For example, if there's a pandemic, another pandemic, God forbid, or something happens, what if you are sick and you cannot work anymore? 
what if, for example, your spouse or your uh, or the person that gives you money, the person you are dependent on, is not a beginning? What happens? You need to create an emergency form that will be able to make you live through three or five for a three to six months emergency form. Every month you say, okay, so so amount of money. If it's 10,000, let it go to my emergency fund. If it's 10,000, let it go to my emergency fund. Then what you do, if, you have, if you've been able to build it to an appreciable point, I do not advise you to keep it in the bank for long. You can take out some part of that money and invest into assets that will also give you money for it, instead of it just being in the, in the bank. Am I, is everyone listening? Am I skating? Yes, well, you hear me. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So setting your financial goals is very, very important. Mm -hmm. uh, budget, don't see it, don't see it as something that is very hard to do. All you need to do is to just ablate, okay. I'm gonna spend for food, I'm gonna spend for transport, I'm gonna spend for my clothing, I'm gonna spend for school supplies, I'm gonna spend for gas, I'm gonna spend for uh, uh, unplanned expenses. When you're able to itemize that, you get that every month, for example, it gives you an, it gives you an idea of what your budget is like. And from that budget, then you are not able to cascade into other things. Because I think we're almost approaching a level so that I'll go straight to that. At least now we have a foundation on why we need to be financially uh, independent. Can we go to the next slide, please? Where we have uh, investment opportunities. Let me pull it out here. Okay. Now, in those slides, on the slides, as you, you get to see them, we have different types of investments investment opportunities. We have different types of investment opportunities. And let me start by talking about stocks. Talking about stocks, yes. For people that may just be hearing this for the first time or, or, you are, or you've heard stocks, you don't understand what it means. Let me just simply explain it. For example, let me take, um, let me take Dangote Cement, for example. Dangote Cement is a company. It is listed on a stock exchange. For a company, for a company to have a stock, that means it is listed on a stock exchange. A stock exchange is the institution where companies list their stocks for the members of the public to buy. So what this affords you, it affords you the opportunity to buy the shares of those companies. So for example, Dangote Cement, is listed on the Nigerian Stock Exchange. So what you can do is part of your money is every month. You can say, I'm taking out 5,000, for example. I'm giving you an example. Dangote Cement could be selling like for 200 Naira a stock, a share. So you could say, I'm taking out 5,000 Naira, for example, and I'm going to invest in Dangote stock. If Dangote is 200 Naira. How much will 5,000 give you? Will that be 25? It will give you 25 units of Dangote stock. That means that if Dangote Cement release their earnings, they make money at the end of every quarter, they release it, or at the end of the every year, they release it. Dangote will say, okay, we are giving our shareholders so-so amount of money as dividends. If you buy a stock in Dangote Cement, for example, it has automatically made you a shareholder. So what that means is that if Dangote makes money every year, the amount of money they bring out, you have a share in it as dividends, as a shareholder. So investing in stocks involves you buying shares of publicly traded companies, which I mentioned earlier. That is your 200 Naira or your 5,000, for example, use it to buy 25 units of Dangote shares. It offers you the potential for capital appreciation. Now, let me explain this. It gives you two opportunities. When Dangote pays dividends, you get dividend income. So Dangote can say, ah, for our shareholders of this year, 
we are paying five naira as dividends. That means that for your 25 units of Dangote stock, you multiply by five naira, that is your dividend. But for the capital appreciation, if you buy it at 200 naira, definitely Dangote cement will not remain at 200 naira. As the market gets better, as the economy gets better, that share that you bought for 200 naira can increase to 220, can increase to 250, can increase to 200, 300. What does this mean? You have made capital appreciation. From that, your capital, you've gotten appreciation, including your dividend. So as women, we can invest in stocks through the Nigerian stock exchange or even other international markets. And how can you do this? Professionals can help you do that. Now, in Nigeria, we have different um, fintechs that can help you do this, even on your phone. But I must also tell you that you've got to be very careful. As women, we should also invest in knowledge. We should read. We should do research before we invest in such platforms. What you can do also, stockbrokers can also actually help you do that. I say, okay, every, year, every month, though, I'm bringing out 50K. I want to be investing in stocks. And I want you to take a look at this with open mind. And don't think it's until you have 1 million. No, you can begin to build. Building wealth is gradual. And the stock market affords you to do that because it is long term. Now, let's move to bonds. Bonds are fixed income securities that provide regular interest payments and return of principal at maturity. This is another investment type. And let me explain. For example, now the federal government of Nigeria They've been giving bonds since they've been bringing out bonds. What does that mean? It's like the government of Nigeria is borrowing from us. They'll say, oh, we have so-so bonds so for 2027. 20, so if you have a million naira, for example, 100,000 naira, you buy federal government bond. By 2027, you will have your principal back. That 100,000, they will give it back to you. But every quarter, they pay you an interest. That is what you see there, that they are fixed income securities that provide regular interest payments. So those regular interest payments could come quarterly. So the, the federal government bond could say, the federal government could say, okay, we're paying you 13% interest. So you'll be getting that interest every quarter, but your principal will be at the maturity of the bond, which is like in 2027, and you get your 100,000 Naira back. So you can invest in government bonds. You can also invest in corporate bonds. You can invest in fixed income mutual funds, for example. Now, uh, there's another thing I would want to say, especially now that the Central Bank of Nigeria just raised interest rates last week. We've seen that the federal government now is mopping Naira everywhere. Then this asset class, this investment class is gaining so much ground now, which is treasury bills. Treasury bills this week, for example, gave an interest of about 17 to 21%. Now, as a woman, you can say the next batch of treasury bills, let me be part of it. I have 500,000 naira somewhere. Or I have 1 million in my bank, not doing anything. What you can do as a woman is that, I think it's coming out again in the next two weeks, but I was told, I uh, was it two days ago by one of my bankers, that now that the federal government has put it at 50 million, that's the minimum price. Why is this treasury bills okay? Even though inflation is at almost 30% in Nigeria, I advise people, don't put your money in the bank when some are not even giving you interest. Or if they give you interest, they give you an interest of 5% or whatever annually. Treasury bills is coming at 17 to 20% interest. You can put your money in treasury bills. They have Three months treasury bills, six months, that's 182 days, 365 days in tre um, treasury bills. That means at the end of one year, at the end of six months, at the end of three months. So you can say, okay, I want to buy treasury bills of 91 days. That is three months. In your bank, you speak with your banker or your bank, I'm interested in this, let me do this. You pay in 500,000 naira, for example. When you pay in 500,000 naira, for example, if the federal government says the treasury bills rate for that um, treasury bills uh, um, package for that month or for that week is 17%. So what your interest will be 
if you are doing three months or if you are doing 90 days or if you are doing 182 days, what your interest would be, you would be able to say, okay, I'm doing three months, which is 90 days. 90 over 365. I'm just teaching you now practical so that you understand how to calculate your interest. 90 days over 365 times 17%, for example, times the amount that you are investing, which is, let's say, a million naira. I hope you all are getting what I'm saying because I'm trying to make this as basic as possible so that it's not, um, it doesn't look so esoteric. So it could be 90 divided by 365 days. Of course, we know we have 365 days in a year times 17%. I'm just taking the rate for last, is it last week? No, this week, 17 to 21%, it depends. The longer you keep it, the higher the interest. So three, six, uh, 90 days is doing um, 17%. Uh, six, uh, six months is doing, I think about 19%. One year is doing 21%. So the longer you keep it, the longer the interest. But we're taking 360, uh, we're taking 90 days, which is three months. So 90 days over 365, times 17%, times 17%, times the amount, let's take, um, let's take 1 million, for example. Let's take 1 million, for example, and do the mathematics. That is 90 divided by 365 times, and times, times, let's take 1 million. If you invest 1 million, for example. So whatever you come up with will be the amount that you will be paid upfront. While at the end of the maturity, that is in three months time or in six months time, you are able to get your interest. But why are you able to get your principal? But why this treasury bills is good is because if you are able to gather a lot of money, you get more interest. But there's no harm in starting small. So I needed to bring that up because that is very essential now, especially now that the Central Bank of Nigeria is trying to mop up all the Naira in the system to be able to contain inflation. Now let's move over to the next one, which, where you see real estate investment. I spoke about it earlier, but I also need to bring this in. I've also seen that there are a few, you know, notable and modern real estate investment. Some people, there are some investment opportunities now that you may not even necessarily have money to buy the house wholesale, but a group of you put together money and you get a house and whatever is rental income from that house, you make money from it. If you are able to buy a house, fantastic. It gives you that opportunity for long-term capital and rental income. But there are also other investment options within the real estate space, which you can also take advantage of. And don't also think that uh, you may not be able to invest uh, or get money through real estate. Even if you don't have a house, you can be, decide as a woman, okay, this real estate, or I have contacts, I know somebody that can rent this house, or I know somebody that can buy this house, and you are able to make the connection. The connection that you have can also bring you money in terms of commission. So don't think that, don't think otherwise, and just put your hands together and just fold it and say, things will come to me. That is also part of why men do better with money because they are thinking, they are making contacts. Even somebody are not real estate agents, by just word of mouth, they make commissions. So as a woman on this platform, also think about that. Then the next one that you're seeing is mutual funds. Mutual funds pull money together. Mutual funds bring your money, my money, everybody's money, they put it together and they invest in a diversified portfolio. So that portfolio could involve stocks, it could involve bonds, it could involve treasury bills, money market, everything together. What does that afford you? That the slices of all the dividends from the stocks, bonds, and co will be paid to you. For mutual funds, for example, investment, as a, investment banks do that. There are many investment banks. Even some of our banks these days have investment uh, institutions. You have like not just giving them advice like Stambik IBTC, I think Access, you have different, different, different investment uh, uh, um, banks that can help you do this. You can just walk in there and they speak with you and you can start from wherever you are. 
Don't say until I have a million naira. No. Wealth is supposed to grow over time. Say, okay, this is what I can afford. And they are able to advise you. Um, um, in, um, they are able to advise you for the next investment class or the one that is appropriate to you. Now, let's go to the next slide. And I also need to talk about this. And I think the next slide should be entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship, for many of us that are women, we are found doing different businesses. Some women just enter businesses through hustle, as it were. You know, you can start your own business or even expand your own business. Some women on this platform could think, oh, I have social business idea. How do I start? I don't even have business ideas at all. The world is a global village now. What the world is now affording us to do is that you can do a lot of stuff online. You can think about what kind of business do I start? Do I even need a store to start? You can start an online store. You can sell products online. You may not even need much money or even much experience to start. You need to ask yourself, what are the products that people are interested in right now? What are the products that the market is interested in right now? What are the products that are selling right now? And you begin to do, you begin to do that. So you can start an online store. There's a lady that I just bought stuff from her online. I don't even know her. I don't know her store. I know she has a store in um, Abuja in Guarimpa, but I've not been up to her store before. I saw her online, so I, I purchased the product. And she's the one making the products. I purchased the products from her. Just a few days ago, I saw online where she posted that she was shutting her store down. She was shutting her fiscal store down, but she has now become an online store. And this thing just rings in my head that, oh, it just rang. That, okay, it could be a, the economic challenge. It could be she's spending much more money, but she did not shut her business down. She just changed her business model from a fiscal store to an online store. So what would that afford her to do? It will afford her that the money she would have paid for um, rent, she will convert it into perhaps producing more products and more sales and doing more online ads and all of that. And if I speak to her like in six months time or in one year's time, don't be surprised that she'll be making more profit than she has a fiscal store. So think about that. There are other kind of businesses you can do. They are skincare uh, businesses now. Every woman wants to look good now. Have you all noticed it? No woman wants to leave herself now. Whether it's hair, whether it's skin, whether, whatever it is, cosmetic, skincare is also one part of the business, but you need to be able to get information, laundry. There are many businesses, catering, many businesses that you can do that will also go back to that foundation which I mentioned earlier, earnings and income. All right, let's go to the next slide. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, the next slide, savings and budgeting, which I, I talked about earlier. The next slide, please. Of course, you need to set, set your financial goals. You need to track your expenses, which I've mentioned. You need to prioritize your savings and you need to automate savings. Now, to help you also save, um, there are different avenues now because for some people, they also find it hard to save. But you could do better by automating your savings. You could even do that online. There are a lot of apps now that can help you do that. For example, PiggyVest. PiggyVest is one app. There are, there are many of them that immediately you get money. You just say, let them be, be taking this 55K every month. It doesn't even need your approval because you've set it up. So every month it takes that money from your account, then it compounds it. And don't forget the power of compounding interest. You need to be able to have savings, then compounding interest is so, so rich. Billionaires understand this, but it's those of us that are not billionaires that will think, oh, until I have one billion or one million. No, the power of compounding interest. Now let's go back, let's go to the next slide. Diversifying investment portfolio. For all those investment classes which I mentioned, you need to diversify your investment portfolio across this. Don't only buy stocks and say I've invested, I'm okay. Don't only do real estate and say I'm invested, I'm okay. Don't only do mutual funds and say, no, I'm invested. I've invested, I'm okay. For you to be able to have good investment portfolio, you need to diversify across 
all the sectors. What does that afford you to do? For example, when there's inflation, as we have now, one asset class will be gaining more money than the others. When the economy is not good, not all the investment class will come down. And even invariably, even if all the investment class comes down, the level of losing will not be as much anymore. So you need to diversify your portfolio. So invest, invest, uh, diversification is essential to managing investment risk and maximizing your return. So it helps you manage your risk. And I will also advise, especially after this webinar, that you want to take your investment seriously, you go to investment banks, they ask you, they will be able to take a look at your risk profile. For people in their 20s, for example, your risk profile will be higher than a woman in her 40s or in her 50s. You are able to take more risk. So what does that mean? You are able to say, okay, I'm able to um, invest more in stocks. More of my money will go in stocks than in bonds because bonds give you more fixed assets. You know, it's moderately risky. But for a woman in her 40s or 50s, I say, okay, let me just do euro bond. Let me do bonds because you know that, ah, my risk level, my risk appetite is not that much. I don't want to lose too much money. The same for, their, for women in 50s or 60s. So you are able to diversify your investment portfolio according to your risk appetite. And your risk appetite also comes with age and comes with how much you need to invest. Let's move to the next slide. As I say, financial services. I need to also talk about this because sometimes we also take a look at our banks as just institutions who keep our monies. There are many banks across the country now whereby you can walk in, they have different products for women. Different, different products for women, different products for women in business. But you must need to assess that information. And when you go to them, you say, what are the products that you have that can benefit me as a woman or that can benefit my business? So you need to assess those information. I don't think uh, they are just doing it to, you know, it's a certain class of people that benefits. No, you've got to seek for uh, information. Um, the next slide. Is that the next slide? Conclusion? Okay. Oh, I've spoken to you. It's 11.15. So as I conclude, because I know we'll have Q&A, financial literacy and investment opportunities are essential for women's uh, economic empowerment and economic independence. I hope that we've understood the financial concepts which I mentioned earlier, investment options which I've also broken down. I hope that with this, we can achieve our financial goals and create a better future for ourselves and our families. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much for the great presentation. Thank you. Um, it was really nice listening to you. And I personally have learned one or two things. So I know that the participants here on this call today have also learned something from your session this morning. And um, we'll get straight into the question and answer um, session. So please, if you have a question, you can show by the rest of hand. You can also put it in the comment section. We will read it out. But before then, but there was a question that was dropped in the chat. I don't know if you would love to address that question now. Do you have it or I can read it out? A question in the chat? Let me see. Yes. Uh, okay. No, I can't. Can you read it out? I'm not seeing any here. Okay, okay that's fine. Uh, Madam, Madam Nancy, this question is being asked by Olua Femi. Madam Nancy, as an activator for the Nigeria Economic Progress, if truly ma, why you and other likes me, other likes mine, haven't strongly advocated the importance and disadvantage of the ongoing insecurity in the country that have hindered all this as follows. One, farmers not being able to go to their farm activities regularly and productively, Two, closure of borders in order to avoid the illegal ways of bringing in firearms into the country as a government claims, which okay, has can you caused. Hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Can you... Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. 
You're breaking. Can you hear me? I can take the question from here. I've seen it. So let, let me answer the question. Can you hear me? Let me answer the question. Um, yes. the, the, the question goes as follows. Let me just quickly read it for those that have not uh, that have not seen, but I think it's on the is on the platform. Uh, the the question is that farmers that people why have people like me not advocated the importance and the disadvantage of the ongoing security in the country that have hindered uh, that have hindered all this as follows. Farmers are not able to go to their farm activities. Closure of borders in order to avoid illegal ways to bring in fire, firearms. Then another major reason of the removal of government subsidy. Then lastly, we all know some MSMEs have been victims of fraud and robbery within the bank and outside the bank in this digital banking, which makes them losing their capital. What are the measures have financial security have digitally put in place to reduce criminality to a reasonable and affordable level? No matter how resourceful the economy is, without adequate and effective security, we can't move progressively. Okay, thank you for this question. And I don't know if, if this platform is the right place to answer this, uh, because we're talking about financial literacy and investment. But I think I'll need to, uh, to comment on this. I don't know who sent it, the name of the person who sent it. If you have been following me specifically, and if you've been following the program that I do on AIT specifically, you will know that as a program and as even a station, as, as AIT as a station, that we've taken it upon ourselves to be advocates for the people. Uh, two weeks ago, for example, we had a town hall on just insecurity alone. I was a co-anchor on that, on that town hall. And we brought in all the stakeholders, including the police and all of that. And all of them, even the Meiti and La people, all, there were about 15 on that panel. And we talked about insecurity. So um, we'll continue to do our bit as a fourth estate of the realm to be able to be the voice of are the people, I know now that insecurity has hindered so many things, and that's also part of why we're having food inflation in the country, because farmers can't go to their farms. I've been an advocate for speaking to government and for being the voice of the people in terms of telling the government what they need to hear.